guys and welcome to Survival Russia. Welcome to this uh, autumn wild edibles special <laughs> around here. The wild edibles is uh, definitely mushrooms. Mushrooms is really big in Russia. It is in uh, many places in Scandinavia also, but I'm pretty surprised that for example in Germany and so on, people are almost as scared of, of mushrooms. Mushrooms is a great uh, source of protein and uh, nutrition in general. <laughs> And they can be stored in many, many ways. Some can be dried to make some really, really tasty soup. And uh, some, again, can be uh, marinated. This I'm not an expert on, and I'm alone here. My wife comes in three days, and uh, she knows all about that. I don't. But uh, let's go out and pick some mushrooms and uh, head down to the old cold weather training camp and the new field kitchen and uh, cook some mushrooms if the, if the weather will uh, allow us to do so. For collecting mushrooms we use these uh, backpack uh, things here. Just a regular basket but, uh, but these are quite useful. And we're not gonna fill this completely today, not at all. Because as I say I don't have the means at the moment or the time for that matter. <laughs> To, to start and conserve a whole basket full of mushrooms. What I want to show you is uh, some mushrooms that can be found uh, all over the northern hemisphere as long as you have fields and birch and so on. We have the troll with us today also. Can see down. She's really good at mushrooms actually. One good sign to look at is the Red fly mushroom, you know, the red cap. I don't know what it's called in English really. The red caps here, or fly mushroom, we all know from the fairy tales. As my daughter say, they're called Mucha Mor Paruski in Russian. And the red caps, you of course, do not want. But they are a great indicator that there will be uh, edible mushrooms nearby. So here we have a classic example. <coughs> Lots of the fly mushroom. And we have a good one over there. Oh, classic good one. Awesome. Down here we have another one. It's also pretty nice and fresh. In this region, I don't know about your region, but if it's uh, tuba mushrooms, not with the gills, all of them are edible, or anyway, they're not dangerous. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Nice ones. When they look like this, they're brown and with some little bit of holes in and so on. They can still be eaten and definitely boiled and or fried for that matter. But for the mushroom collector, they will be for drying mostly. But you can see, there's nice meat in them. No problem. Lots of protein here. It's awesome to have such a small sized person with you to go in under the bushes. Well, that's kind of what we got for less than an hour of picking mushrooms. Pretty alright. Different sizes, different kinds. Let's try and clean them up and cook them if the weather allows. <laughs> so here are some of the results of the mushroom picking with the little troll here. <coughs> She's really good at it. She even brought some more fresh ones right now. These are not looking that great because they are from yesterday, but it doesn't matter. Maybe we will have a weather issue and have to move over in the Survival Russia studio because I'm gonna show you how to cook and so on some of these. But firstly I want you to show, for example, this little one here is from yesterday. So, but it still looks pretty fresh. So what I do, I'm not super expert on this. What I do, I just cut the little root off. See, these are very indigo blue or what you can call them. But it's not dangerous or anything. Then I will just peel off the, the layer of the stem here. Just a thin layer as possible. Let's try to open it up. You see? Looks very nice. Lots of meat. As I said, there's a lot of lots of protein in this. All this, the cutting board and the skillet and so on, is uh, authentic Survivor Russia equipment. I actually carry this stuff with me. The plate here is, of course, not so much. But I had to store them in the fridge overnight. Oh, this big fighting knife here is not ideal for it, but it surely can do it. You can also clean them like this here. Here's a completely fresh one my daughter found. These are awesome. They, we call them the Bierli white mushrooms. And uh, these ones, you don't 
peel off the skin on the stem, just cut it off like this here. These are really awesome for frying. I'm not sure if it goes on cam, but right behind me, we most likely have a rain system coming in once again. It's really irritating. But uh, I think we'll move over in the Survival Russia studio. So while we're waiting for yet another shower to pass, I'm gonna spend the time making a little kitchen tool. So while we sit here and wait for the shower to pass, it should be done in a few minutes, hopefully. Why not say a few words about the wild edibles and all this stuff and mushrooms and so on. Knowing wild edibles is uh, really useful because it can help you to stretch the supplies you already have because in my opinion it's very important always to carry supplies in the wilderness, food supplies that is. Knowing the mushrooms at this time of year here will definitely help me to stretch my buckwheat and so on for a long long while so to speak. It would make it last a much much longer. Also the mushrooms are really great because I mean they don't have this uh, bland uh, mushroom taste, these wild mushrooms here like the champignon or what you call it. They are really tasty. Some of them are better for frying some of them are better for conservation and uh, different marinades and so on. I'm not an expert on that. That's my wife. <laughs> but I can do a video on it if interested because if you're a homesteader or just live in an area like this with lots of birch and, and uh, spruce especially, there are some really tasty ones. Rishiki we call them. I don't know what they're called in English. But they are really tasty. When you take them out of the marinade, you mix them with uh, sour cream and onion. Ooh, that is so tasty, you wouldn't believe it. But knowing your wild edibles is definitely useful and uh, should definitely be studied because, as I say, it would help your so already existing supplies to last for quite a while. If you have food for three, four days, you might be able to do even more than a week, especially in the mushroom season. Mushrooms is a great food source and it's free and it's abundant in an environment like this. That means most of the northern United States and Canada, Scandinavia, has tons of them. Just study them a little bit and uh, you'll find out which ones are good and which ones are bad. So this is how the Siberian natives make uh, feather sticks. The idea is that here you have some feathers that the fire will grab onto and here you have a little bit more material that uh, eventually will combust as well. <laughs> it's a great way to start a fire. If you haven't watched that video, I'll be linking to it up here. Okay, so we'll take the rest of the video on the Sony action cam. My daughter just found three of the best mushrooms of the whole uh, mushroom collecting. I mean, this is what you want. When they are nice and white in here, young mushrooms, because then they have no worms or anything in them yet. Let's cook up some mushrooms. I brought an onion with me because when I camp in the warm season I often bring like onions and potatoes and so on. Now my dog is freaking out. So I'll surely take the three mushrooms my daughter just found. They're awesome. As before, just take a little bit off here. That is awesome. It's always good to bring stainless steel knives with you. That's a big discussion. Stainless versus carbon. That should make for a good skillet fire. To add a little bit of spices here. As you might know, I also carry spices with me, whether it's dehydrated soups or what. When I'm done with this, I can split wood with it as well. 
Not the most aesthetic kitchen tool of all time, but it works. So mushrooms and onions are done. I made myself a little uh, funky spoon of uh, birch bark. Because I don't have a spoon with me. Mm. This is just awesome. Super awesome. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna take this home with me and eat for dinner tonight. And to this, you could add your buckwheat, your rice, your pasta, whatever, and make it last a lot, lot longer. Maybe it's not gonna last until dinner. Mm. Okay, guys, from the field kitchen here, we'll just thank the new donors. I think it's Elias from Sweden until now, and my friend Jano in Holland, Netherlands and uh, Greg in the States. I don't think there are any more at the moment. Also, please check the links in the description to the vehicle project, to Patreon, PayPal, Facebook, and all that funky stuff. And sub share and like. And uh, until next time, get out on train and get it done. And see you next time right here in Russia. Thank you, guys.